What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're gonna be talking about Tesla and taking a look at the data behind the company's sales to get a look at how they're doing relative to the competition and how this thesis of them becoming the apple of the automotive world, dominating the shift to electric vehicles is actually playing out in the data because you know recently Tesla share price has hit 2.5 year lows at about $190 per share. And there's a huge amount of skepticism surrounding demand for the company's products. And I just think generally the media has portrayed this picture of Tesla you know, really struggling and, and, you know, doing poorly and, and things are going horribly wrong at the company. When in reality, I almost think that couldn't be further from the truth. From a product perspective, you know, Tesla's vehicles, and this is the data we're gonna look at today, about 30 charts lined up, is dominating the electric vehicles niche. And I think this is the data that at least personally as an investor convinces me that their leadership in the electric vehicle space has never been stronger and Tesla's never been better positioned to take advantage of this paradigm shift into electric vehicles. You can go to www.hypercharts.co if you wanna follow along and check out a bunch of the data I'm gonna go through myself on Tesla's financials and sales. What is the data behind Tesla's actual sales? If you take a look at the numbers since 2012 Q3, which is when the Model S first went on sale, the trend is extremely clear. We have an up and to the right massive growth over time in Tesla's quarterly vehicle deliveries. And in fact, if you overlay these arrows, even on the very weak Q1 quarter, you can see that the uptrend and actually pace of growth is appears to be accelerating in Tesla's core electric vehicle business. And so, you know, overall as a whole, yes, this Q1 was weaker than expected. But remember, we had the first international shipments and we had the end of the U.S. tax credit. And even so, Tesla was able to post, you know, the third best quarter in its history. This is what I'm expecting for the next three quarters. And so as you can see, without those, you know, Q1 overhangs, I think Tesla's, this the growth in Tesla's quarterly deliveries is set to continue and they are on track to, to post record deliveries at some point in this year. And it is worth noting that my estimates are actually far below the company's management or management's official guidance. We're going to get more on that in a second. On an annual basis, here are the sales numbers behind Tesla. As you can see, you know, this isn't me expecting anything. This isn't any extrapolations. This is just the hard sales data. I mean, we have a company that is went from selling a couple thousand units a year to hundreds of thousands of units per year in less than a decade. They're vertically integrated. They're manufacturing this. You know, if you take away Model S and X and 3 and just look at total deliveries, this just shows you the scope of how rapidly Tesla has grown in the past six or seven years. Moving on to my estimates for 2019, I'm expecting deliveries of 330,000 cars. I hope Tesla proves me wrong. This is far below the midpoint of 380,000 units, but I think it's important to be conservative. And even with these conservative estimates, even if Tesla misses the low end of its guidance by about 10%, which is what I'm assuming, we still have tremendous growth over the long term in their core electric vehicle business. This is how I'm expecting the breakdown to look by model. As you can see, that huge growth in the Model 3 is overwhelming a huge decline in Model S and X, which I assume only continue uh, at selling at about Q1's pace, which is the lowest in years. Now, let's talk more about the Model 3, though, because this is Tesla's most important product launch as a company. This was the, the Gen 3 version of their technology. I mean, this has been in the works for years to bring a mass market or a much more mass market, more affordable car to the mainstream that would inflect the electric vehicle industry, uh, you know, in, from just these rich early adopters into much more of the average consumer. And I think this Model 3 has been a huge success by almost any way you slice it. This is the, the monthly sales numbers here in the US from Inside EVs. Um, as you can see, we've, we've gone through that. That trough after the sales tax, we're normalizing at about 10,000 units uh, per month. We'll get more data on this in just about a week from Inside EVs. This is the official quarterly global sales data from Tesla. As you can see, the Model 3 has gone from, you know, that, that production hell in late 2017, early 2018 to now hitting over 50,000 units delivered for three quarters in a row. And these are more detailed estimates from the model I showed you earlier, uh, with me assuming about 280,000 deliveries for the full year. This is how it breaks down by quarter. Here, if you take a step back on an annual basis, this is what the Model 3 deliveries have been, according to my estimates, which are, once again, way below Tesla's. You can see this program has gone from, uh, you know, just getting off the ground in 2017 with 1,500 units to 280,000 or on track for that in 2019. This is incredible growth. I mean, I wanted to look up how successful this was relative to other auto industry launches two years to get to 280,000 units delivered. So now let's compare this to the Prius, which was Toyota, the world's largest auto manufacturer uh, by market cap, a huge company known for incredible manufacturing prowess. Let's talk about their entrance to the hybrid, you know, green car space with the Prius. So here are the Prius sales um, by year. And as you can see, they began selling in 1997, but they didn't hit uh, 280,000 units delivered until 2007. It took 
10 years for Toyota, in theory, the world's most advanced, you know, best in manufa- best at manufacturing auto company to actually get to 280,000 units a decade. Tesla did the same thing in two years. So this just goes to show you how incredibly successful this product launch has become. And on that note, let's talk about the Tesla killers. Let's talk about the competition that everyone has says been coming for years now. Where are they? Because I'm not seeing them. This is US electric vehicle sales for battery electric vehicles for the first four months of this year. And as you can see, the Model 3 is crushing the entire competition. The Model S and X are three and four. The Bolt is in there at number two, the Leafs at number five. But if you adjust this for selling prices, Tesla's selling cars that are from 2X to, you know, 5X more expensive than the Bolt or the Leaf, um, but they're still, you know, the Model S and X are still selling as many units. So I just think if you adjust this for selling prices, it looks even more like Tesla is absolutely dominating the EV landscape. Let's hone in on the Chevy Bolt, which was the Tesla killer at one point, you know, the first 200 mile range EV. If you take a look at the sales on a monthly basis, the Tesla Model 3 has crushed it for like 15 months in a row, outsold the Bolt. You know, it's almost a joke how small the Bolt is on this chart, even though the competition is much more affordably priced, in theory has a much, you know, better established sales infrastructure and better brand, they're, they're still getting outsold. Now let's talk about the Jaguar I-Pace. This was the other luxury EV Tesla killer. Look at the Model 3 versus the Jaguar I-Pace sales. You can barely even see the I-Pace. I mean, this is a joke. If we just look at the iPay sales alone, I mean, they're barely even scaling at all. And so all of these supposed Tesla killers from these, you know, much more established, much more competent in theory, auto manufacturers are struggling to find any mainstream traction relative to what Tesla's seeing. Just taking a step back, this is uh, thus far in the first four months of the year, Tesla's actually captured 51% of the plug-in market. This isn't even battery electric vehicles. This is also including any type of plug-in and Tesla still has 51% market share. So I would argue this is the data that shows that Tesla is dominating in in the most exciting sector of the automotive industry, electric vehicles. Now, let's talk about why. Why is Tesla outselling all of the competition? And you could say a million things like the supercharger network, the uh, incredibly beautiful touchscreen that it has, Tesla's overall brand, the design, you know, the app, the tech first focus. There's a million reasons why people love their Teslas. But I think the core reason why I'm so excited about Tesla's lead in the electric vehicle industry is their efficiency lead. If we take a look at this table put together by Matt Joyce at Matty Mogul on Twitter, one of my best friends in the Tesla space, has put together this research that adjusts essentially the range, the battery, the weight of the vehicle to figure out the core efficiency rating. Essentially, how good is the battery for how heavy the vehicle is and how much range do you get out of that? And this is a great way to sum up the technological advantage of the overall battery package, skateboard, drivetrain uh, package that is required for electric vehicles. And as you can see, Tesla is way ahead, almost 20% ahead in front of the, the next, you know, best, most efficient competition, which is the Hyundai Kona. So all of Tesla's vehicles are industry leading in terms of efficiency, you know, validating that they have the best technology in this space. And so it's don't, you know, when I'm saying the sales, you might just say it's all all oh, it's all hype, Tesla has the best brand, but I would argue it's actually because Tesla has a much better product. They're selling much longer range EVs. That matters to consumers. That's why their sales are so much better and they will continue to have the best product as long as their efficiency rating is the industry's best. Tesla is so successful in bringing a compelling EV to market. They're actually driving EV adoption, increasing the adoption of electric vehicles. These are US plug-in sales, units sold annually, uh, units sold annually according to Inside EVs. This includes all types of plug-in cars, not just BEVs. And as you can see, Tesla Tesla, if we break this out by Tesla, not Tesla, is actually driving like the majority of the growth in this industry and became over 50% of the market in 2018. So Tesla is single-handedly driving this trend towards electrification. If you look at the rise of the EV market share as a percentage of total car sales, you can see the percentage is rising. This, the movement's happening. Like for all these tree huggers who are, are, are rooting for the, the reduction in emissions of the transport system, this is huge. And it's all because of Tesla's success. So, you know, this is the thesis that has been, you know, talked about about for years, for almost a decade now, and it's actually coming to fruition. This is incredible, and people are losing sight of the data amidst these headlines, but this is the these are the facts. Electric vehicles are taking off, uh, the market share is gaining, and it's because of one company, and that is Tesla. Let's quickly move on to the financials because this is what I want to sum up about Tesla as an investment. You know, I think about this as a growth stock, you know, a technology company attacking a huge opportunity, not making money today, but eventually if they get big enough and reach their, you know, long-term mission and potential, I think this could be a cash machine. So these are the quarterly financials. As you can see, strong revenue growth, two profitable quarters in Q3 and Q4. We did have a loss in Q1, but you know, this is an incredibly rapidly growing company. I mean, to put things in perspective, these are the annual financials, a couple hundred million in revenue in 20 
2011 to 21 billion in revenue in 2018 vertically integrated manufacturing company find me another company in the world that is growing this fast you won't because there isn't i mean this is one of the greatest growth stories in in modern capitalist history and nobody appreciates it and this is the data that backs it up so this is why i don't care about whether they're profitable today or this quarter what the numbers are for next quarter or this month or last week because long term tesla is showing they can rapidly scale into a tens of billions of dollars vertically integrated manufacturing company and i think eventually that will lead to significant profitability here's a reason why the gross profit for the company has been climbing every single year and so if you take out the sgna the actual margin the profit potential the earnings power to me is best gauged by this gross profit metric this is scaling from you know just around 300 million dollars in 2012 to over 4 billion dollars in 2018 more than tenfold increase on a quarterly basis here are the numbers a lot lumpier but once again you can see that clear uptrend in the consistent gross profitability and earnings power of tesla and, you know, taking a step back to that revenue line item, I mean, this is the chart that sums it all up to me. This is a growth story. This is what I'm expecting for 2019. Continued growth, 28 billion in revenue. You know, Tesla right now is trading at 33, $34 billion market cap. I think this is pricing in, you know, this almost no more growth. And history has shown us, this isn't me making anything up. This is just the historical data that Tesla is a compounding growth machine, has compounded revenue at over 90% for the past seven years. And I think the rapid growth will continue and so uh, anyway, I just want to make this episode because I feel like people are getting so, so lost in the minutia of the headlines, the quarterly numbers, and they're totally losing sight of the amount of progress Tesla has made, how they are still absolutely dominating the electric vehicle niche in the U United States, at least where this market share data is from. And I think that, you know, market share dominance will eventually carry to every geography where they start launching. And, you know, we're going to see Tesla be tremendously successful. The long-term vision of them becoming an extremely successful leader in the electric vehicle space has never been more true like it's not even a theory anymore the data is here to prove it and so i just think I, this cannot be understated enough last thing i want to point out here's tesla's china revenue i annualized the q1 number of about 800 million to get you to a 2019 estimate i think this could go wait be much higher than this actually but china is a huge potential growth engine that is sleeping uh for all for tesla in my opinion tesla is a consumer facing luxury product company at the end of the day i think chinese consumers resonate with the brand they view it as a luxury item and i think this is going to have huge success in china they're the first wholly owned automotive company to be able to be building a factory in china that's a huge deal on like a geopolitical macro scale that is also going to allow them to avoid the tariffs to you know not pay for shipping costs reduce their selling price rapidly accelerate sales in the region so i think china is another you know on the back burner huge growth catalyst for this company that nobody is thinking about the factory we're looking at pictures today it's already a building it already exists this was a pile of mud six months ago and uh you know i thought it was crazy when they said they could actually be building cars there by the end of this year but every single day we go forward as we see the progress that's getting closer and closer to actually becoming a reality Reality. And so I think, you know, the data shows in the U.S., Tesla's crushing it. They're still crushing it. They're expanding internationally. There's a ton of excitement and progress going on with China. I think the future for Tesla, when you take a step back, has never been brighter and the data has never been stronger about the company's success. So this is HyperChange. Would love to know what you think about this in the comments below, because it's hard for me to remember a time that there's been a bigger disconnect between success in reality with consumer products in the market and, and the share price and the media just saying how, you know, the company Companies losing. I just think there's a huge, huge disconnect. And anyway, this is HyperChange. Huge shout out to all of our Patreon supporters, producers, fun in the channel. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.